Hello and welcome to our time of worship together this week. Let's begin our time of praise together with the amazing hymn, with the words, You're the word of God the Father, from before the world began, every star and every planet has been fashioned by your hand. All creation holds together by the power of your voice. Let the skies declare your glory, let the land and seas rejoice. You're the author of creation, you're the Lord of every man, and your cry of love rings out across. star and every planet has been fashioned by your hand. All creation holds together by the power of your voice. Let the skies declare your glory. Let the It is by God's grace that we gather as his children and we come to confession because of his grace, 
mercy and redemption. How deep the Father's love for us How vast beyond all measure That He should give His only Son To make a wretch His treasure How great the pain of searing loss the Father turns His face away As wounds which mar the Chosen One Bring many sons to glory On his shoulders Ashamed I hear my mocking voice Call out among the scoffers It was my sin that held him there Until it was accomplished His dying breath has brought me life I know that it is finished I will not boast in anything no gifts no power no wisdom but I will boast in Jesus Christ His death and resurrection Why should I gain from His reward? I cannot give an answer But this I know with all my heart His have paid my ransom Why should I gain from His reward I cannot give an answer But this I know with all my heart His wounds have paid my ransom If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sin, God is faithful and just to forgive us our sin and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Almighty God, we name our sin before you today. The darkness that colours our lives and the lies we choose to believe. We confess the wrong we have done and the good we have turned away from. Lord, in your mercy, forgive us and cleanse us, that we may walk in the light of your truth and demonstrate your love in our lives. In Jesus' name, Amen. Almighty God, you hate nothing that you have made, 
and forgive the sins of all those who are truly sorry. May you create and make in us new and repentant hearts, that we, lamenting our sins and acknowledging our brokenness, may receive from you the God of all mercy, perfect forgiveness and peace. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. We're continuing through the first letter of John on chapter 4, verses 7 to 21. Loving one another. Dear friends, let us continue to love one another, for love comes from God. Anyone who loves is a child of God and knows God, but anyone who does not love does not know God, for God is love. God showed how much he loved us by sending his one and only Son into the world so that we might have eternal life through him. This is real love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his Son as a sacrifice to take away our sins. Dear friends, since God loved us that much, we surely ought to love each other. No one has ever seen God, but if we love each other, God lives in us and his love is brought to full expression in us. And God has given us his spirit as proof that we live in him and he in us. Furthermore, we have seen with our own eyes and now testify that the Father sent his Son to be the Saviour of the world. All who declare that Jesus is the Son of God have God living in them, and they live in God. We know how much God loves us, and we have put our trust in his love. God is love. And all who live in love live in God, and God lives in them. And as we live in God, our love grows more perfect. So we will not be afraid on the day of judgment. But we can face him with confidence, because we live like Jesus here in this world. Such love has no fear, because perfect love expels all fear. If we are afraid, it is for fear of punishment, and this shows that we have not fully experienced his perfect love. We love each other because he loved us first. If someone says, I love God, but hates a fellow believer, that person is a liar. For if we don't love people we can see, how can we love God whom we cannot see? And he has given us this command, those who love God must also love their fellow believers. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I wonder if you've ever taught someone to do something, maybe driving or playing the piano, or maybe helping someone with maths or a language, or maybe teaching them to knit or crochet. We might be born with an aptitude to do these things in the first place, part of that creative image of God. But I expect, if you're like me, it involved someone teaching you how to do these things in the first place and then you pass on those skills or wisdom or learning to someone else. In a way, that's what John is saying here about loving one another. And through the chapters of this letter, he's been drumming this in to his readers because here 
once again, John underlines the importance of sincere love and how it's reflected in our actions. In following Jesus, there is no room for hatred, as Jesus is rooted in love. And in this passage, John takes us another step deeper into the nature of that love. Again, there is the call to love one another. But this time he says, because love comes from God, because he is love. Here we are shown the very nature of God. It's why Jesus is that expression of perfect giving love because it is at the heart of God's very nature. He cannot act any other way, because love is simply being true to his nature. We discover too that it's God who is the author of love. It isn't that we have loved, but that God loved us first. God took the first step, and supremely in sending Jesus. Our love is our response to him because it shows that his love is within us when we share it in loving one another. We love because he first loved us. And that's quite an interesting thought. Part of our love is responsive in that God loved us first and we respond to that love in our response to Jesus. This is shown in our commitment, in our worship, in our prayers and in our lives. But we are called to love each other as he has loved us. And part of that is what John says back in chapter 3 that as Jesus laid down his life for us, so we ought to do the same. And as selfish beings, that can be really hard. We naturally shy away from what that might mean. We see and often admire people who have dedicated their lives to serve in the hardest of places, but maybe it's not for us. So is there something too here about loving each other in the way that God does? John tells us here that we love because God loved us first. In other words, God took the initiative. So isn't that part of how we should love one another too? Taking the initiative in showing love to those around us. I wonder what that would look like and how exciting or daunting that might be. Maybe we feel more comfortable standing back. Maybe we tend to wait and respond rather than take the initiative. Maybe as we look at Jesus, we see that God's love is a brave love and is offered even if it's rejected. And John is calling us to allow the Spirit to lead us into that place of loving others, of inviting others to respond to God's love for them. May we pray. Dear God, thank you that you are a loving, gracious God. Thank you that you've offered us forgiveness and the gift of new life in you. Thank you that your love is perfect, it never fails, and that nothing can separate us from your love. We pray that our lives would be filled and overflowing with the power of your love so that we can make a difference in this world and bring honour to you. Lord, thank you for your words through scripture and please help us pray through 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Lord, thank you that your love is patient. 
Help us show patience with those around us. Lord, thank you that your love is kind. Would you help us to extend kindness to others? Lord, we thank you that your love is not jealous. Would you help us cast aside feelings of jealousy or hatred towards others? Lord, thank you that your love does not brag and is not arrogant. Would you help us not to live with pride or arrogance, but to choose to walk with humility and grace? Lord, thank you that your love does not act unbecomingly. Lord, help us to extend kindness instead of rudeness towards others. Help us to lay aside the critical tone and the tearing down with our words so that we can truly walk in peace. Lord, thank you that true love does not seek its own. Lord, would you help us not to live selfishly, looking only to our own interests. Lord, thank you that true love is not provoked. Would you help us not to become easily angered? Help us not to be so quickly reactive, but instead slow to speak and slow to become angry. Lord, thank you that your love does not take into account a wrong suffered. Lord, help us not to hold grudges, but to choose to forgive, even when it's difficult. Lord, thank you that your love does not rejoice in unrighteousness, but rejoices with the truth. Lord, help us to love your words of truth. May we walk in your freedom and wisdom. Let it be what drives our lives and choices every day. Lord, thank you that your love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Thank you that your love never fails. Help us to love as you love. Fill us with your spirit so that we can choose what is best. We are weak, Lord, but we know also that even when we are weak, you are strong within us. Thank you that it's not all up to us. Thank you that you equip us to face each day with the power of your love, your forgiveness and your grace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen.
May the majesty of the Father be the light by which we walk, the compassion of the Son be the love by which we walk, the presence of the Spirit be the power by which we walk, and may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among us and remain with us for ever. Amen. So go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.